Hey there, a quick note before we start the video. I just wanted to explain a little bit of how I do these videos as far as my review process. I'm just telling you things I like and I don't like, and that's it. It's very simple. I'm not an amazing film director. I'm not some influential amazing artist. I'm literally just looking for a community of other people that enjoy the same things that I do. And when I say enjoy the same thing, I mean enjoying the lifestyle of watching movies all the time and ingesting new information and crazy stuff. Yeah, so that's that. I just wanted to put that out there because I would like to build a community of like-minded people where we can share interest and relate to each other on creative endeavors and intricacies within our brain. I don't, I don't really know. Good morning, hi there, hello. Yet again, I cannot sleep, so I watched another movie called Mr. Crockett. Today we're gonna be talking about Mr. Crockett. It's atmospheric textures, it's horrific elements, it's subtle suspenseful moments. Let's get into it, why don't we? Mr. Crockett is a dark and surreal tale that unfolds in a remote, rural town where local legends come to life. The story follows a group of residents who encounter a mysterious drifter named Mr. Crockett, whose arrival coincides with a series of unsettling events. As tension rises, secrets are unearthed, and the line between folklore and reality blurs. The film delves into themes of trust, fear, and the power of belief, keeping viewers on edge as it unravels its chilling mystery. Yeah, that's about it, pretty much. All right, so usually in these videos, what we do is we go into things that I like and things that I don't like. To be honest, most of the things about this movie, I enjoyed. So we're basically just gonna be talking about that, and then I'll sprinkle in some things that I might have felt different about. But it's okay, I'm mostly indifferent about them, if I'm being honest. The practical effects monsters are awesome. I keep seeing so many new movies where they have practical effects and they're utilizing that more. And it reminds me of stuff that used to come out in the 90s and 80s, but it has this extra quality to it combined with that practical effects style. And there's something really nice about it. And you really get to see the craftsmanship and the talent of the designers that make these pieces for the films. It's very nice. So when Mr. Crockett appears to these families to do his evil deeds. One of the scenes where he first interacts with one of the fathers that is treating their children horribly. So let me, let me, let me reverse that. So let me, let me, let me reverse that. Basically, Mr. Crockett is enacting revenge on parents that don't treat their children correctly or with enough love or attention, things like that. But I would say that he probably goes a little bit too far. Also, they're not his children because when he reprimands the parents, he ends up kidnapping the children, which kind of negates the whole fact of the moral justification for all of this stuff. Maybe I didn't say that right. I don't know, I don't really care. It's literally 4 a.m. It's literally 4.50 a.m. actually. So when Mr. Crockett first shows up and reprimands this father for not treating his child properly, he attaches him to this chair. He straps him in with these practical effects type monsters and he opens his stomach up and because the father was trying to force the son to eat when he didn't feel like eating mr crockett starts to force feed into the father's stomach chicken and turkey and gravy and all of this stuff into his stomach just <gasps> and it's pretty intense and that was a great start to the movie i was a little bit worried about this movie because from the trailer they just don't show very much so i just wasn't very sure but once i watched it and once i got to that scene i was like okay this movie's clearly made for me this is my level of gruesomeness and it has the practical effects element come on there's not much more that i could want let's be real all right and before i talk about anything else about mr crockett i have to say that the actor that plays him is phenomenal he has this like split character personality that works very well and it was genuinely unsettling suspenseful intense uncomfortable it just felt like one of those scenarios where you're talking to your father mother family member when you know you've done something wrong and they have all of this rage and intensity and it's all completely justified so you feel even more like you're deserving of this intense reaction that you're getting from them I don't know how to explain it, but it just felt very justified and intense in the way that he was acting. Not necessarily his actions were justified, but it felt like he had a deep sense of conviction for what he was doing. And it seemed like there was a very serious reason why he was doing these things. Like there was some sort of origin to these interests 
you could call them. Also, speaking of great actors, the mother in the movie, the main mother and the first mother. So there's like this first mother within that first scene whose husband is killed and then her child is kidnapped. She's amazing. But the second mother, who's more of the main character of the movie, her husband dies. She's taking her kid to this funeral and he's playing video games at the funeral. It's very awkward. Nobody really wants to tell him to stop doing it because his dad just died, which is totally reasonable. But within that interaction between the mother and the son when they're in the car before the funeral and after and things like that, it just felt very realistic. She did an amazing job. And yeah, she was great. Every time Mr. Crockett reveals himself, it's creative and weird. And there's one time where he's traveling through the main character's house and He's traveling like interdimensionally through these big purple portals and it's just beautiful. He like literally draws these portals with this magic marker that opens up his spaces in order to travel through these different dimensions. It's awesome. It's a nice little touch. I forgot to mention this. The Mr. Crockett character is very Mr. Rogers-esque, I would say. Okay, back to good actors. There is a witness at one of the houses where someone is kidnapped and it's a woman who's smoking a cigarette talking to the cops and then she talks to the main mother to tell her what happened and her voice was so sultry and raspy and smooth at the same time i just loved it i had to point that out if you watch this movie just look out for that there is a character within that scene where she's explaining to the mother what happened to the house where there's this other character that shows up and he's overhearing what the two mothers are speaking about. It's very obvious that that character is going to interact with the mother and say, I believe you, and I've gone through the same thing. I've lost my daughter. And it just felt very suspicious. Whatever, I'll leave it at that without spoiling anything. There's a certain hallucination dream sequence that is beautiful, but it's clearly not and it felt a little bit unbelievable that they wouldn't immediately know they were dreaming, considering like everything that was happening within the movie in the context. It just didn't feel very believable, but that's fine. I'm willing to look past it, okay? There's this one scene where the mother says to the other mother, she says, do you ever think they're better off with, with Crockett? And all I was thinking was, yeah, probably. That's why he's kidnapping all of your children because you're bad parents. I'm just kidding. But seriously, some of them are actually deplorable parents. So in a way, they do have it better off with Mr. Crockett, if we're being real. There is another little thing that bothered me. In these horror movies, there's always a character that's just super godlike strength mode. Nothing hurts them. They might not look like that, but you inevitably see that they can't be killed or can't be injured easily. And then for some reason, towards the end of the movie, there's always some weird way that they end up doing it. And I just don't like the way that they did that in this movie. They didn't necessarily kill him in this way, but there was a part where they kind of wound him and it just didn't make any sense considering how powerful, cunning, and decisive he is. All right, they don't have like some old random character that shows up for no reason in the movie and then explains everything that's going on. They actually have Mr. Crockett do it. And when he does it, there's this long animation. At first I was like, this animation's too long. And then I was like, wait a second, no, this is a perfect amount. It's a great animation. It fit the aesthetic of the movie. The only thing I would say is that it, it could have been cool if they did practical effects for that. If they did puppetry or stop motion, it would have been nice to see creatively what they could have done with that, if that makes sense. Ooh, there's one character who half of their head is open. It's one of the monsters that works for Mr. Crockett, right? One of the characters from the show. And the missing piece of the head, right? You can see brain just right there, just coming out of it. And I felt like that was a nice touch. It just felt beautiful. It looked slimy and gross. And then the hair was covering around it. I loved it. Also, the monsters just looked realistic. The practical effects looked real. I know there was probably a combination of practical and CGI like a lot of these movies do, but it just felt great to me. Scary or bad? Ooh, Mr. Crockett, whenever he does something intense, he does his little dance. He dance and I really like when he does his dance. It's very nice and endearing. He's bad though. Other than that, it was just a really great, great, great movie. I, I enjoyed pretty much every moment of it, if I'm being honest. I press play. I'm unsure within the first two minutes. Sold. Let's watch the rest of the movie. It just turned out great. It was a nice surprise. If you have time, go watch it. If you like psychedelic colors, if you like purples and blues, and if you like analog horror, it has a huge element of that to it. And I love analog horror, Local 51, The Backrooms, SCP Foundation, different stuff like that. All that stuff's great. Maybe I should do some videos about that stuff. That could be fun. Hmm. Who knows? But I like the movie. 
I loved it, in fact. I think you should go watch it. It's on Hulu and some other places. Whatever. I hope you all have a great day. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Bye now. Bye.